Hello, my name's Lewis and this is DIY Machines, a channel where I get to share with you 3D printable projects. Today, we're going to take a standard sit-stand electric desk from Fazebo and add to it with a collection of 3D printed items and some very cool smart LED lighting effects. For example, these LEDs going up the corner of my room here change both their color and pattern depending on the status of your 3D printers. It's a brilliant way to keep an eye on them if they're in another room or you're just facing the other direction. I'll show you some more things now. So this is the space where we're going to install our new desk. Fezibo kindly sent me their very latest sit-standing electric desk, which we're going to put together here, and they were happy for me to augment it with some additional super cool features. So before we do that, we need to put this desk together. Don't forget that you can find links for everything I'm using in this video, including the Fezibo desk down below this video in the description. So I've read ahead here and this back section of one of the base units gets sealed in by this panel. So it's going to be a great place for us to keep our electronics inside. So for now, I'm going to fit this panel into place but what I'm not going to do is screw it in through the underside as it says in the instructions. Then later, we'll be able to easily open this back up again and hide our electronics inside of here. If you've ever assembled IKEA furniture before, then you are more than familiar with the style of instructions written for the desk assembly. Everything is pictorial and clear. It took me just a few hours to assemble the desk on my own. And there it is. Pretty cool, huh? So though the desk on the right hand side here is fixed in height, the one over there on the left hand side can be raised or lowered using the little electronic control panel here on the underside. I've already set three positions, one for sitting down, one for soldering at the seated height, and then a third one for standing up. I've already gone ahead and tested the anti-collision safety feature as well. I placed an obstacle underneath the desk and told it to go all of the way down. No sooner had it detected it, did it reverse itself to a safe distance. Which is quite nice to find on a desk of this price because my old one, which costs quite a bit more, doesn't have this feature. So this is where I'm going to put my 3D printer on the static desk on this side. The plan is to add some LEDs around the edges of the two desktops. And since my new 3D printer has an LED status bar at the bottom, I've decided to add a string of LEDs down the corner of the wall here, which will change color according to the status of the 3D printer. This way, when I'm facing the standing desk, if the printer has an error, such as a, a filament out, then this wall will light up red and I'll be able to see it without having to turn around and continually check the status of the printer. I also plan to add some LEDs to the underside of these units to give a really cool underglow. I think this will make it look really kind of cool. For the LEDs that are going around the edge of the desk, I'm going to be using some LED cob lights, an aluminium extrusion to contain them, and a diffusing color to go on top. I'm using these cob LED lights as they hide the hot spots that you can often find in LED strips. For example, compare it to the more familiar WS2811 LEDs and the difference in hot spots and diffusion is clearly quite visible. The aluminium channels are attached to our desk edge with some high strength double-sided tape. At the corners, I will be mitering the aluminium channels with the standard blade on a circular saw. As aluminium is a fairly soft metal though, you could easily cut this with a handsaw. But I have access to a circular saw 
and I'm lazy by nature. With the first channels in place, we can also start to install some of our LEDs. We're going to control our LEDs using the WLED software, which will run on some low cost ESP8266s in the form of these Wemos D1 mini boards. Now, I've also picked myself up a 12 and a half amp 24 volt power supply, which will be used to drive the LEDs. Both of these will house inside the main cabinet, which is what we looked at earlier and left the back loose on. So the idea is to add the already mentioned desk edge lights onto these edges. To keep the costs lower, I'm only going to be adding them to the visible edges. We will also add under unit lighting facing downward and a few LEDs inside the cubby holes and shelf. The control data for the LEDs flows through them in one direction. So we'll put an ESP module in the cupboard over here, connect it to the desk lights at this end. The data then can flow along out along the desk and then head underneath the unit, onto the shelf underneath and then finally continue on to the underside of the cupboard. Let's continue installing this run now. We can cut the LED strips as marked and use wires to extend the gaps between them. I'm using some 21 AWG wires in between the strips for both the power and data lines. I'll be using the same to connect the data wire from the start of the chain of our LEDs back to the microcontroller. However, to deliver power to the LEDs, I'm going to use some thicker 18 AWG wire. These thicker wires will connect back to our power supply via some Wago connectors so that we can connect several of our cables to the one supply. I then simply repeated the same steps to fit the LEDs and channels to the remainder of our desk, underside the cupboards and inside the shelves. Now that we've finished fixing the LEDs to our desk, we can program our two microcontrollers with WLED. Now we also need to adjust the logic signal from 3.3 volts that the ESP8266 puts out to the 5 volts which our LEDs require. To do this, I'm butchering a PCB from my old GeoLeaf project that connects it to a logic level converter to boost that 3.3 volt signal up to 5 volts. I've written instructions for doing this on my website at diymachines.co.uk along with how to add your lights to the free WLED app. I also added the control interface of my 3D printed GeoLeaf project. This way I can configure everything at once from a single page on my phone. Let's add some more items to the workstation now such as my monitor, laptop, smart speaker and desktop power supplies. We can also use the 3D printer to add some more homemade items. I designed this desktop MagSafe charger for my phone to make good use of iOS 17's new standby screen feature. Of course you can download this for free using the links below the video. I've also always wanted to use some of the open source hexagonal wall storage system. So this is my chance to print some of the parts out and mount them here at the end of my desk. So now, as I promised at the beginning of the video, I'll go over how to set some LEDs to respond to the status of your 3D printer. I've already gone ahead and added an additional strip of LEDs down the corner of the wall here. They're the same LEDs that are going around the edge of the desk. To control them, we're going to use Octoprint running on Raspberry Pi. As I'm already using Octoprint to manage my 3D printers, I just need to physically connect the LED strips data wire and then install a plugin in Octoprint. 
First, we need to open up Octoprint and open its settings menu. From in here, we can open the plugin manager tab and then select get more. Search for WLED and install the plugin that it returns. You'll then need to restart Octoprint when you're prompted. After the restart, you'll see a new icon at the top of your dashboard. For now though, we need to configure the plugin. So open up the settings menu again, and this time open the WLED connection tab and then edit connection settings. At the top, we will enter the IP address of the WLED instance and then quickly test this connection before closing the window. So whilst wiring this project, we've been connecting separate sections of our LEDs in one long continuous chain. This is so we can control them from fewer microcontrollers. But it would be a good idea if we were to let LED know about these separate segments, such as the ones running around the desk and underneath the shelving. This will then allow us to easily target specific colors or effects to different areas, making for a much more interesting lighting system. So why don't we start by expressing a segment for the corner of my wall here, which we'll use to show the status of the 3D printers. We can configure which segments different printer statuses affect by editing them here. Let's make a segment in WLED now. Open the segments tab and then enter the range of LEDs that you want to include in this segment. Note that this segment I'm creating is going to be assigned a numerical value of one in this instance. Apply your changes and then head back to the Octoprint plugin and enter the new segment number one in my case. We can quickly test this out by trying to connect to your 3D printer. Now, I'm not sure why, but by default in WLED, the segments that we created do not persist if you turn off your microcontroller and switch it back on again. So to work around this, we can save our segments in a preset and then set this preset to load automatically every time the microcontroller powers back on. Back in WLED, open the presets and then create a new one assigning it an ID of 16. Open up your LED settings and scroll down the page. Find where you can enter which presets ID should be applied at boot and enter 16. Save these changes and the job's done. Now that we're done with the wiring project, we can tidy it up using Fezibo's cable management kit, which makes short work of putting those cables away where they can't be seen so easily. Thank you so much for watching to the end of this project. I hope that you found some inspiration in it. A thank you goes out to Fezibo again for the desk and everybody else who's helped make making projects like this possible. I am extremely grateful. I'm sure standing up at a desk like this, it's got to be better for my health. Until the next project, take care, do some good, and ciao for now.